The legend of Rodrigo Diaz de Bevar, lived 1043 to 1099, also known as the Cid, is a challenging one because he was many persons, the champion of Castilian King Sancho III, a vassal Islamic leaders, and a king in his own right, over Valencia. Professor Stanley Payne describes him and his role in the history in this manner. As Islamic Amoravid power grew, it veered away from the strongly held Castilian center of the peninsula toward the prosperous urban centers and irrigated fields of the east coast. There at Valencia, the greatest military figure of medieval Hispania, the legendary national hero Rodriguez, Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, known from the terminology of his Muslim subjects as the Cid, had carved out an independent protectorate. As far as known, the Cid was a renowned Castilian knight, vassal of Alfonso VI, banished from his native kingdom because of, this misunder of a misunderstanding. He entered the military service of the Emir of Zaragoza and gained more laurels in the eastern part of the peninsula. As an Abmaravra danger grew, he was accepted again into the service of the Leonese crown, though Alfonso VI remained jealous and suspicious. He was granted hereditary autonomous dominion under the crown of Leon of all Muslim land he could conquer in the peninsula's, peninsula's east. But in 1088 and 1092, the Cid carved out a domain reaching from the region of Lerida and Tortosa down to Valencia, and proved a shrewd ruler as well as a clever and ruthless warrior. Large tribute payments were exacted from the Muslims in keeping the Hispano-Christian practice. In 1092, the pro amoravid party in wealthy, propus Valencia rebelled against their emir, who was a vassal of the King of Leon. Mobilizing his maximum force, the Cid took advantage of civil strife in Valencia to add that city to his domain after a long siege that decimated the Muslim population. Major Amoravid counteroffenses to regain Valencia were twice defeated, and even the Muslims admitted the extraordinary astuteness and military prowess of the new Valencian overlord. The Cid combined some of the prime characteristics of the new Hispanic society of his time. He represented the growing initiative of Castile, personified the ideal of the warrior overlord, and prosecuted the reconquest while demonstrating an understanding of Muslim psychology and ability to treat it to treat with and govern Islamic people. During the last decade of his career, he cooperated with Leonese, Aragonese, and Catalans in the crucial struggle against the Almoravids. After he died in 1099, however, the Levantine regions could not be defended. Alfonso VI drove off a Muslim force that besieged the Cid's widow in 1102, but lacked the strength to do other than evacuate and burn Valencia. The surrounding district was immediately seized by the Almoravids. Bernard F. Riley adds, The legend and subsequent historiography have much exaggerated the role of El Cid, even during the reign of Sancho II. Menendez Pedal, often the most important study of El Cid, himself draws back from the most obvious excesses of the legend. Notwithstanding, he has accepted so much of it, on primarily literary grounds, that something of a reevaluation must pre preoccupy any historian of the epic. To begin, the date of birth of Rodrigo Diaz is obscure, which is not remarkable for the period. Menendez Pidal places it at about 1043, which would seem generally reasonable if that hero participated and was armed in the Battle of Graus in 1063, as asserted by the historian Rodetri. The same source goes on, however, to assert that El Cid was the alferez, or military leader, of the armies of Sancho II. And this assertion, although hallowed by subsequent repetition in epic literature, must be rejected. It marked contrast to the contemporary documents of Alfonso VI and the charters of Sancho give no evidence of either a Mayordomo or Alferez and the retinue of the latter. This situation is probably yet another indication of the smaller extent and more primitive organizations of Castilla. In any event, the evidence of the contemporary documents is to be preferred to the poet's account at at least 80 years later. Although, as been noted, Rodrigo Diaz confirmed some 60% of the charters of Sancho II. His position in the royal court was most certainly up the second rank at best. For a young man, perhaps 22 in 1066, family influence would have been an all-important consideration until sheer ability could make itself felt. El Cid's father, Diego Leañez, was not a court figure. There were being not one 
known document in which he is found in the company of Fernando I or indeed anywhere at all. The paternal grandfather did confirm five documents of Fernando I. The documentary evidence adduced here suggests that the court of the King of Castilla was dominated by the great, three great families of the Alvarez, the Ordones, and the Lara. The great role assigned to El Cid by Menendez Pedal can only be sustained by ignoring the charters of Sancho and giving full credit to the much lighter assertions of legend and story.